Hey everybody, here's your crash course on what happens after hysterectomy and bladder swim procedures. Now this pelvis has traditionally female anatomy with the bladder in front, uterus and ovaries behind, and then the rectum farthest in back. When we pull these three organs out and look at them from the side, you can see their relationship from the side view. Now, if it is a hysterectomy with an oophrectomy, that means that the ovaries are also removed. Uh, it's important to ask your surgeon what's their strategy for supporting the vagina after the uterus is out. Usually we want to leave the vagina because it does lots of functional things still. Uh, but we want to make sure it's supported because studies show that if you don't support this, then that person is going to be more likely to require a second surgery down the road and because they could have a pelvic organ prolapse of just this vaginal part. No fun, so talk to your surgeon about their plans for that. The most common ways that they support that vagina post hysterectomy is through what's called a colpoplexy, where they support the top of the vagina back towards the front portion of the sacrum, uh, around the sacrotuberous ligament area. The a little bit less common is to secure it anteriorly to the back of the pubic bone. The decision to which direction you need will be made by your surgeon depending on your anatomy and your specific needs. Um, as far as the bladder sling goes, the few primary ways that we will um, see a sling put in are transvaginal slings and transurethral slings. The transvaginal sling is going to come from an anterior approach. So your client will have a couple of incisions right through here, and the sling material will just kind of scoop up and support the bladder and give a little bit of resistance to that urethra. The transobturator procedure, the support comes a little bit from more underneath, and the incisions are going to be a little bit more inferior here. Again, this hole is the hole where the pee comes out. Transvaginal sling, you're going to have um, the support put in through the front. Transobturator is going to be put in through the underside. Uh, again, just like with the vaginal support after hysterectomy, the decision to the type of support will be made by your anatomy, your specific needs, and your surgeon's preference. Just bring that surgical report with you to post-op PT, and we can talk to you about what it means. Now, functionally, the two big takeaways to prepare for your procedures. If you are having that hysterectomy, uh, where, that is, that, where the vagina is going to be supported and stabilized posteriorly, the pelvic floor is not going to be happy about this. Where that colpoplexy inserts is a common insertion point for a lot of the pelvic floor muscles, so they're going to react slightly angrily by tightening up. That can make the first poop post-procedure very difficult. So right now, pre-procedure, get working on your Kegels, relax. More importantly, bear down just from your pelvic parts, not from your abs, and relax. Make sure you really tune into that part, and if that sounds super foreign, check out other posts on my site, or go get yourself to a pelvic PT. The other thing about that hypertonicity in reaction to the support of this vagina post hysterectomy is that it can also cause some stress incontinence, some leakage with bending or stair climbing, just because the muscles are temporarily too tight. A lot of surgeons will tell ladies the leakage is normal and it will just go away with time. Say thank you very much. I would still like to go to pelvic floor PT. And you get your cute butt into a pelvic floor PT, and we will get you better much faster and quicker and more thoroughly than just leaving it to chance. So hopefully this is helpful, and please leave me any questions or comments you have below. Thanks.